Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness the Premier lauded the national efforts exerted to contain and prevent the spread of the coronavirus in the kingdom through a set of precautionary measures entitling Bahrain to be among the leading countries regarding its ability to combat COVID-19 and significantly control its spread, which has earned it the claim and praise of the WHO. The Royal Highnesses stressed that no matter how heavy the challenges are, the determination of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and with the solidarity of its people is greater. They stressed the government's resolve to spare no efforts in order to attain tangible results, improve the quality of performance and meet citizens' needs. They affirmed that the current situation in Bahrain and the world as a result of COVID-19 requires doubled and concerted efforts through commitment to the national responsibility to overcome the current phase and its impact in various fields. The Royal Highnesses valued highly the dedicated national efforts aimed at ensuring the safety of the na nation and the citizens, noting that such endeavors showcase the strength and cooperation of the citizens of Bahrain, as well as their solidarity in facing various dangers and challenges. They expressed optimism that Bahrain is capable of overcoming the current phase, thanks to the full awareness and constructive cooperation of everyone in the kingdom in order to meet the national aspirations for safety, stability and progress. The Royal Highnesses reviewed a number of local economic and social topics as well as the progress of a number of developments and projects in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa held at his palace in Rafah a work meeting with the Education Minister, the Labour and Social Development Minister, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister, the Minister of Health and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He stressed the Kingdom's success in tackling the repercussions of coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic thanks to the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister commended the efforts of all ministries in dealing with the current situation by taking the necessary precautionary measures that were highly appreciated by the World Health Organization and the relevant international parties. He thanked the medical and nursing staff for their distinguished national role on the front line in combating COVID-19. He stressed that they deserve support and praise for their noble role, which earned Bahrain an elevated stat status in handling the pandemic. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's success is owed to the solid and sound basis laid in the medical, educational and labour sectors, which helped contain the impact of the crisis. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister listened to a briefing by the Foreign Affairs Minister Abdel Latif Rashid Zayani on accomplishments in carrying out his directives on evacuating Bahraini nationals abroad and the efforts made in, the res in this respect in accordance with the government's keenness on citizens' safety wherever they are. He was also informed by Education Minister Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi on the educational situation and the ministry's plan to facilitate the students' ac academic acquisition and provide them with the best services. His Royal Highness listened to a briefing on the Education Ministry's efforts in coordinating with the Foreign Affairs Ministry to implement this directive regarding the evacuation of Bahraini students' standard abroad and ensuring their return to the homeland. He was also briefed on the Education Ministry's plan concerning the educational process in public and private schools, stressing the need to ensure the students' educational march is not affected. Regarding his directives to intensify inspection and monitoring campaigns to control prices and fight monopoly, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister listened to a briefing by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Bar Rashid Zayani, on the steps taken in this respect. He was also informed about plans put in place to monitor prices of basic commodities and ensuring their availability in the market. His Royal Highness the Premier listened to a briefing by the Minister of Labour and Social Development Jamil bin Mohammed Hamidan on the services provided by the Ministry to help people who have been affected by the outbreak of the coronavirus. He was also informed about the steps taken to follow on the situation of the expatriate workers in cooperation with the Ministry of Health and ensuring their commitment to their preemptive measures. His Royal Highness was also briefed on the Health Ministry's plan to combat COVID-19 and follow up on the implementation of health regulations adopted according to the WHO standards. The ministers expressed sincere congratulations to His Royal Highness the Premier on his safe return to the Kingdom after his full recovery, lauding his efforts to boost de development in Bahrain and serve the Bahraini people. 
In a message to the world marking the International Day of Conscience, His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa stressed that in view of the present global challenges and exceptional circumstances, the world needs to enhance cooperation and human solidarity on the basis of a sincere conscience that promotes hope as well as bolsters humanity's joint quest for growth and advancement. He added that the world today is facing major transformations because of the spread of coronavirus and the heavy losses it has inflicted, which requires a clear joint visualization to contain all the threats that humanity faces. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of the value of conscience as a human pivot that alerts the world to the necessity of sh shouldering its collective responsibilities towards everything that could bring human beings closer and fulfill the aspirations of the peoples for growth and stability. His Royal Highness pointed out that a vivid conscience is the hope to all humanity to maintain the continuity of the stability of nations and people. He added that Bahrain has lived and continues to live as a cohesive developing society based on the diversity of civilizations and cultures. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister noted that these values have been enshrined by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. These values were further in entrenched in the National Action Charter and in the Constitution that bolstered the values of freedom, equality and justice for all. His Royal Highness stressed that countries are facing a major responsibility towards the world's future and that the international community must seek to lead and pioneer to combat evil trends. He said that the world needs to draft new strategies that bolster the concept of global health security as an indiv indivisible part of security in the comprehensive sense. His Royal Highness then pointed out that through the initiative of the International Day of Conscience, the Kingdom of Bahrain is very keen on conveying its message of civilization to the world as a state of peace and compassion that has clear contributions to all international efforts for the progress of humanity and the achievement of permanent and stability and peace. The visionary role played by His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa, the Prime Minister of Bahrain, in promoting peace and strengthening relationships among the people of the world should not be underestimated. It has been the leadership of His Royal Highness that assured that the efforts of Bahrain's government were directed to realizing the highest development goals for its people and focusing their attention in promoting the principles for establishing a movement celebrating a world culture of peace and understanding. An effort irrespective of race, color or creed where all people would come together across the globe and work to preserve the right of all to a healthier environment and a secure and peaceful lifestyle. His Highness Prince Khalifa had directed Bahrain's representatives to engage with partners and seek out people of a similar mind to initiate this movement based on world conscience. In the initiating message to the United Nations General Assembly, His Royal Highness had stated that there is an urgent need for an occasion on which all people can unite to intensify efforts that preserve the right of all to live in peace and harmony within secure and stable environments. Environments that sustain development and promote human well-being, yet preserve the ability of the planet to support both human and natural life. It was the direct result of these far-sighted efforts that initiated the adoption unanimously by the United Nations of Resolution 73-329 in July 2019. The President of the General Assembly, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa, we welcomes the declaration of 5th April as the International Day of Conscience. The PJ welcomes this initiative of the Prime Minister of Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, supported by Member States. After the official announcement at the United Nations, His Royal Highness received many congratulatory messages from all the ambassadors to Bahrain 
written one from His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, who welcomed the efforts of His Highness in promoting peace and prosperity through the Day of Conscience. His Highness also briefed all the ambassadors on his expectations for the inaugural celebrations and that would reflect and focus world attention and influence the strong will of the people of the world to make world conscience a cornerstone of collective action towards a safer, more peaceful and stable world. Most peoples of the world believe everyone has a conscience, a personal space within us, a place where God's values are written on our soul. I think that the Day of Conscience is a wonderful initiative and something that the world can finally enjoy and look forward to. I think it's wonderful that there are still leaders in the world who care about love and peace and that we should all shout about it on the day. On the Day of Conscience, do I have to like my sister? Bahrain has always felt like a safe haven to us. It's a wonderful island, it's beautiful, and the people over here are kind and generous. Humanity's thinking and the actions should reflect the fact that we are one human family. On the Day of Conscience, we should all join together and demonstrate that. With consciousness comes ethics, motivation, and principles. So on the Day of Consciousness, I hope that we see many more people adopt these principles as well. A virus is infecting the entire world. And this virus knows no national boundaries, so why do countries insist on acting selfishly? The Day of Conscience is a chance to change that, for all the countries to unify their efforts and act as one. The Day of Conscience provides an occasion for all those seeking an opportunity to join His Royal Highness, Bahrain, and the people of the world in making World Conscience the cornerstone of collective action, specifically in the advancement of building a world culture of peace with love and conscience. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held a virtual meeting with the SCYS member and Chairman of the SCYS Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Lam Ayyad. His Highness affirmed that the principles, values and goals of the national program to develop the youth and sports sector Istijaba achieved a quantum leap in the youth and sports sector in the kingdom, noting that the program achieved many values for Bahraini sports th through establishing a just competitive environment. He hailed the payment of all athletes' financial dues, noting that the last batch that has been paid includes the financial sports dues of athletes without contracts. His Highness directed those concer concerned with amending the contract systems to protect the rights of all athletes. He also directed that the professional athletes' title include both local and foreign athletes with contracts. His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid commended His Highness Sheikh Nasser's keenness on athletes' financial dues and his initiative to achieve justice among Bahraini sports families. Lamayad affirmed that the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs is keen on implementing the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser, praising the follow-up of His Highness Sheikh Faisal on the steps taken on the matter. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired a virtual meeting with a number of officials in the youth and sports sectors. The Secretary General of the SCYS, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Lam Ayyad, the Assistant Secretary General of SCYS, Dr. Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar, the Secretary General of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Mohammed Hassan Nasr, and the Sports Consultant of the SCYS President, Mohammed Hamad Al Ajmi participated in the meeting. His Highness Sheikh Khalil affirmed that efforts continue to implement the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to intensify all steps aimed to protect the society and to increase awareness on the importance of applying the measures taken for the protection from the disease. His Highness Sheikh Khal discussed with the officials the means of implementing the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to take further precautionary measures to protect the Bahraini sports society from danger of the coronavirus.
On the occasion of the International Day of Conscience, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Rashid Al Zayani, affirmed that this initiative comes within His Royal Highness of Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa's keenness towards international humanitarian issues and the importance of unifying efforts for the best interests of humanity. تحتفل مملكة البحرين ودول العالم يوم الخامس من أبريل من كل عام باليوم الدولي للضمير الذي اعتمدت الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة في دورتها 73 في قرارها الصادر بتاريخ 31 يوليو العام الماضي بناء على مبادرة كريمة من صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رئيس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله ضمن مبادرات سموه العديدة التي حظيت باعتراف وتقدير وثناء المجتمع الدولي وفي إطار اهتمام سموه بالقضايا الإنسانية الدولية وإيمانه الراسخ بأن الضمير ركيزة أساسية لتكاتف المجتمع الدولي وتضامنه وتوحيد جهوده الإنسانية لخير البشرية لقد أكد قرار الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة أن اليوم الدولي للضمير يشكل وسيلة مهمة لتضافر جهود المجتمع الدولي لتعزيز السلام والتسامح والتعايش والتفاهم والتضامن من أجل بناء عالم مستدام قوامه السلام والوئام والإخاء وتتجسد أهمية هذا القرار الدولي في تأكيده على ضرورة تسخير كافة الجهود لتعزيز السلام والتنمية المستدامة وتعبئة جهود المجتمع الدولي أفرادا ومجتمعات ومؤسسات لبناء وتعزيز ثقافة السلام الدولي أن مملكة البحرين إيمانا منها بدورها الإنساني الدولي واعتمادها ليوم الخامس من أبريل من كل عام يوما دوليا للضمير ورؤيتها الثاقبة لأهمية التعاون والتضامن الدولي لمواجهة مختلف الصعاب والتحديات والأزمات تؤكد بأن المجتمع الدولي أحوج ما يكون الآن إلى التعاون الشامل للتصدي لخطر جائحة فيروس كورونا التي تهدد البشرية وتعيق جهود دول العالم لتحقيق التنمية والتطور والازدهار ومن هنا تبرز أهمية اليوم الدولي للضمير لتحفيز العمل الجماعي والفردي على المستوى العالمي وتسخير كافة الجهود والإمكانات والقدرات وتقديم الدعم المالي والفني للدول الأقل نموا لمساعدتها على تجاوز آثار هذه الأزمة الصحية الدولية الطارئة إن مملكة البحرين تدعو المجتمع الدولي والدول الحريصة على الأمن والسلم العالمي إلى انتهاز هذا الظرف العصيب لتوحيد جهودها وتسخير قدراتها للعمل سويا من أجل مكافحة هذا الشر الخطير على العالم ونسأل الله العلي القدير أن يكلل جهور قيادتنا الحكيمة ووطننا العزيز لتجاوز هذا التحدي وأن يلهمنا سبحانه القدرة على المضي بجد واجتهاد وتفاني نحو تحقيق أهداف مملكة البحرين النبيلة في هذا العهد الزاهر لحضر الصاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك مملكة البحرين حفظه الله ورعاه والله ولي التوفيق والسداد On the occasion of celebrating the International Day of Conscience, which came as an initiative of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, stated that COVID-19 is not only a challenge for global health systems, but also a test for the human spirit. He stressed the necessity for focusing on joint humanitarian principles and values to save lives, help those in need, and build a better future for all. He reiterated the General Assembly's call to all member states, UN institutions, international and regional organizations, the private sector and individuals for establishing the culture of peace and co conscience through providing quality education and implementing public awareness activities. 
The Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Cabriases, hailed the initiative of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to designate April 5th as the International Day of Conscience, noting that His Royal Highness's initiative carries noble goals that consolidate diversity, inclusiveness and collective action to keep the world safe. He stressed the importance of His Royal Highness's initiative, especially amid the current situation the world is facing as a result of the coronavirus, adding that it makes it more pressing than ever to promote a culture of peace with tolerance and conscience. He affirmed that governments, the private sector, civil society and the UN should all play a role in building the culture of peace with love and conscience through education and public awareness raising activities, noting that access to good information is vital to the COVID-19 response. On the occasion of a number of international officials praised the initiative of His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and expressed the importance of the International Day of Conscience, especially during the current circumstances that are facing the world. Pojawiła na podziałach. Kraje wyścigi między sobą robiły. I to powodowało zgubienie wartości i sumienia. I dzisiaj, jeśli chcemy budować nowy, lepszy świat, to powinniśmy iść za pomysłem księcia Khalifa i premiera Bahrajnu, którzy mówią, że przyszły świat należy budować na uzgodnionych wartościach i wychować człowieka sumienia. Cieszę się, że tą inicjatywę podjął ONZ, bo jest szansa, że ta zasłużona organizacja razem z Bahrajnem dopracuje się rozwiązań, które będą pasowały na nasze przyszłe budowania. On this day of conscience, thanks to the initiative of the Kingdom of Bahrain, let's we all remember the importance of peace for the world community in such times of growing fear, rising tensions and nationalism. More than ever, facing the tragic challenges of the COVID-19 epidemic, we see the necessity of a stronger solidarity, cooperation and multilateralism. We all have today an obligation to react collectively in a burst of courage to alleviate the suffering of our nations around the world. At the founding conference of the United Nations, and therefore in the chart of the United Nations, the whole question of conscience was brought to the table. Because as human beings, we must run our life on principles, on values. And conscience is a gift from God. Everybody has a conscience. Everybody knows what is right and what is wrong. You don't actually need a preacher. You don't need a... You know that this is wrong. It is wrong to kill. It is wrong to not to love people. It is wrong to be lazy. All the things that human beings value, they are actually universal because they are based in our conscience. So, but it has taken 75 years. This year when we celebrate 75 years of the United Nations, the world has finally come together to define common principles along which we can govern ourselves internally. Because self-governance -govern governance by each one of us through our conscience is a key. I would, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate, as I said, the people who have spearheaded uh, this campaign. It has, it has been such a, a difficult campaign, it has taken so long, but finally the world, the world has come together. Actually, I am sending this uh, message at a time when there is a global pandemic of the coronavirus. And you can see that humanity across the continent, as we confront the, corona, the coronavirus pandemic, you can see it has pricked our conscience. You can almost say that it is not just a coincidence. It is actually almost like a divine intervention that what else could bring the world together could force us to examine our conscience, our way of life, the way we treat each other, the way we share success or failures or challenges. On this remarkable day, the International Day of Consciousness, I would like to highly acknowledge His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain.
this in fact reflects and translates to the vision of His Royal Highness to draw attention to the interlinkages between the three pillars of the UN, peace and security, sustainable development, and human rights. And of course, provide an opportunity for the international community to promote peace, tolerance, inclusion, understanding, and solidarity in order to build a sustainable world with peace and prosperity for all. The International Day of Conscience was approved by the United Nations General Assembly in July 2019 and was promoted by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership by His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. It is based on the principles of peace and cohesion. Conscience is linked to sustainable development as it promotes the idea of leaving no one behind thinking before we act, promoting moral and ethical behaviors, understanding the consequences of our own behaviors, stressing individual responsibility to change the world and to do to others what you expect others to do to you. In doing so, it promotes the achievements of the Sustainable Development Goals on the economic, social and environmental fronts. Any global challenge requires joint, unified, and coordinated efforts, such as the ones that are being carried out today to face the COVID-19 pandemic. And those efforts need to be based on individual commitment and overall conscience, as is being the case in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is for that reason that we should all join our minds and our hearts in celebrating the occurrence of the International Day of Conscience. The sustainable development goals that express the global conscience call upon us to work to eliminate global poverty, obtain gender balance, and protect the climate. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights reminds us of the inherent value and dignity of every individual. And the call for peace based on the rule of law and the elimination of nuclear weapons calls us to become fully human and live as one human family. It's time that people like you and I go deep within ourselves and become fully aligned with the voice of conscience and bring loving kindness into action and change indifference into compassion, hatred toward anybody into loving kindness. The Shura Council issued a statement to mark the International Day of Conscience adopted by the United Nations last year at the initiative of His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Council praised the support of His Royal Highness Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in keeping Bahrain a leader in the promotion of world peace. The Council added that the rapid developments and the numerous changes across the world today require all states to cooperate in order to preserve the, and enhance the gains of national nations and people and to make conscience the basic pillar of joint work to build safe and stable societies that live in security, peace and coexistence. The International Day of Conscience received a large international and media recognition. The UNESCO recognized the International Day of Conscience as a means of increasing the efforts of the international community to maintain peace, tolerance, integration, understanding and solidarity to create a sustainable world that is based on peace, solidarity and harmony. The Arab League Sec Secretary General also expressed appreciation for the initiative that reflects an understanding of the world's need for values that should be enhanced and established in the international system mechanism and relations between people and governments. Also, a number of Egyptian newspapers noted the celebration of the International Day of Conscience in response to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's initiative and its response in establishing the basis for peace and the focus on achieving the goals of sustainable development. The Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Dr. Nayef Falah Mbarak Al Hajraf, affirmed the importance of the human dimensions of the Kingdom's initiative to declare the 5th of April an International Day of Conscience, which was launched by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and adopted by the United Nations as an international day that is celebrated every year. He asserted that the initiative translates the human values established in the project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa by including them in the National Action Charter and the con Constitution 
which led to the kingdom's achievement of many important and influential initiatives in the field of human coexistence and support for world peace. The Grand Imam of Al Azhar al Sharif praised the initiative of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa of the International Day of Conscience, which was adopted by the UN. He stressed its importance in saving nations from wars and conflicts and enhanced unity and coexistence among people. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the weekly meeting in which the Council approved a draft law, adding Item 3 to Paragraph C of Article 8 of Decree by Law 78 of 2006 on unemployment insurance aimed at paying the salaries of Bahraini citizens working in the private sectors for the month of April, May and June of 2020 to ensure the stability and sustainability of citizens' living conditions. In line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to deploy emerging technologies to help mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, the Information and E-Government Authority, with the support of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, has begun distributing electronic bracelets compatible with the Kingdom's COVID-19 contact tracing app, Be Aware. The application complements the efforts of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus by advancing contact tracing efforts to swiftly identify and keep track of all active cases and their contacts. The IGA Chief Executive Mohammed Al Qaid noted that the application is an example of how Bahrain is leveraging technology to safeguard the well being of citizens and residents. He explained that the bracelet supports the Ministry of Health mandate to address public health concerns during the global pandemic. He added that violators will face legal penalties potentially being sentenced to imprisonment for a period of not less than three months and a fine between 1,000 and 10,000 Bahraini dinars. Self-isolating individuals using the application must identify their isolation location, in most cases their home, by selecting set home location upon arrival. Users can correct location information by calling 444. The Ministry of Health officials may randomly send picture requests to which self-isolating individuals must respond with a photo which clearly shows their face and bracelet. Attempting to remove or tamper with the bracelet is a violation and officials confirm the bracelet is waterproof.